Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Jose Garcia and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the measuring tool uh, in NX2212. Uh, now, historically in the past, uh, NX, before NX12, uh, they used to have a tool for every type of measurement. For example, there was measure distance, measure body, measure angle, things like that. So if you've used NX in the past, chances are you are very familiar with those terms. Uh, after NX12 though, they decided to combine everything into one tool. Uh, and it is my firm belief that the measuring tool is simply misunderstood. Uh, and once you get the hang of it, you'll actually really like it. Uh, but I feel like Siemens uh, could have done a better job, you know, describing this tool. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at how to use the measuring tool. I have an example in front of me, and this is the example that I use all the time when I'm training these courses, especially my uh, basics of modeling, uh, primarily because it uses pretty much every single measurement that we can think of, okay? Now, in order to find the measuring tool, you have to be in the modeling environment, and then you go to analysis, and then you go ahead and hit measure. Actually, I'll take that statement back. You don't have to be in modeling, but if you're in the modeling environment, it would be found in analysis, measure. That's this little guy right here okay now with that being said the measuring tool has in my opinion three very important things that you need to be aware of before you actually start to use it okay the first thing is this guy right here the selection filter and if you are a former user of nx you know exactly what this does if you're new to nx the selection filter allows you to filter for certain things right so for example if you pick datums it'll only let you select datums uh, for our purposes no selection filter for now will work just fine and if you're a new user then i suggest you stay with selection filter for now okay the next thing you need to be aware of is the radio button selections here. Now there are six of them and we're going to break them down in a second. Okay. The third thing that you need to be aware of are your face curve and body rules. Okay. And if you're a former user of NX, you know exactly what these do for new users. Uh, these are rules that allow you to select continuous things. For example, there's tangent faces, adjacent faces, so on and so forth. So if you pick tangent faces and you select a face and it has a tangent partner, it will select both of them. Okay. Things like that are very important in this measuring tool. Do those three things correctly and you're going to have a great time in this tool. If you don't do them correctly, if you pick the wrong things, you're going to get very frustrated. Okay. So let's take a look at how we take some very simple measurements. Okay, let's start off by analyzing this object radio button. What exactly does it do? If you leave your mouse there for a couple seconds, it actually does a pretty good explanation. It says selects an object and automatically adds it to the selection list. The selection list is this guy down here that you see. Okay, so what object will do is it will list everything that you select right here. Okay, and if it finds a measurement, depending on your result filter, it will spit it out. Okay, whether it's based on the thing you select or whether it's based between the two items that you select. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say that I want the distance between this front chin here and this back wall here. Okay, so all of my things here are on the default. I didn't change them. So I'm going to go ahead and select this front chin here like that, you can see that immediately NX says, ah, I found a measurement for you based on the object that you just selected. And how does it determine that? Well, it determines that because you have the face filter turned on. Okay. Since you selected a face, it will return the measurements of a face. Uh, you can ignore it for now. And if you rotate the model and select the back wall, you will see that it gives you the minimum distance between those two objects that you just selected. Okay. Now you can go back to the object. For example, I'll go back to object number two here and you can see that it gives me the face measurement of the second wall that I picked right here. Okay. Now you can see that this is getting very messy, right? For example, we don't really need the inner angle here. So if you go over to your result filter, there's the angle filter here. You can turn that off and it does not display that measurement. Needless to say, you have to use these result filters to turn off certain measurements or turn them on if you disable them. Okay. 
That is what object does. So let's keep going here, right? Let's take a couple of more measurements. Your best friend in this entire tool is going to be this reset button. What this will do is it'll reset everything, including your selection filter, your radio button option, and your face curve and body rules. Okay, uh, let's take some more measurements here. Let's say that we want the diameter of this hole here. I'll go ahead and click it. Uh, as you can see, it spits out the radius just like that. But if I go down here and expand it, I can tell it to give me the diameter. Uh, and there's the diameter there. Okay, easy peasy, not a problem. All right, let's go ahead and reset this tool again, just like that. Uh, let's take a look at another measurement here. Let's say that I want this uh, edge distance here. Okay, so you can see that you know it can get a little tricky if you're not careful. You can always use the selection filter to your advantage. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and say that I want to pick edges. Uh, and I'll go ahead and select this edge right here. And as you can see, it spit out the length of that edge. Okay. Uh, very simple, very easy, nothing too crazy there. Let's go ahead and reset this tool there. Okay. So that is what object is. It allows you to pick objects and it lists them here as one individual thing. And it'll give you the measurement of that object or it'll give you the measurement between those objects. Okay. Simple. The next one over here is point. And this one seems to throw a lot of people off. Okay. What point allows you to do is it allows you to select existing points like I have right here. See, I have one right there. All right. And it allows you to select inferred points. Now, what exactly does that mean? Let me switch back to object here and notice how when I move my mouse over to the midpoint of this line, I cannot pick the midpoint. It refuses to let me pick it. But if I change it to the point radio button, now you can see that I can select that midpoint without a problem. See that? This is perfect for situations where you are relying on inferred points. All right. Now, object can select existing points. As you can see over here, if I move my mouse over to it, I can pick it. Right. But if I want the measurement from, say, this point to the midpoint of this line, I'd have to use the point radio button. OK, so let's take a look at an example. Let's say that I want the measurement uh, between this point right here and the midpoint of this line. So you can mix and match your radio buttons. For example, I'm on object right now. I'll go ahead and select that point there. Uh, but in order to pick this midpoint, I have to go to the point radio button and I have to select the midpoint there. As you can see, it gives me the distance between those two items. Okay. That is what point allows you to do. It allows you to select inferred points. Okay. Let's reset this tool again. Notice how my selection filter reset as well, right? Not a problem. Uh, so now let's take a look at the next one, which is vector. Okay. Vector allows you to infer angles based on vectors normal to faces that you pick. Uh, and it also lets you establish projected distances. All right. So let's take a look uh, at the angle option here. Let's say I want the angle between the vector normal to this face and this face. I'll go ahead and select that face there and then this face here. You can see it gives me the angle between those two uh, vectors normal to the face. OK, of course, you can also take the outer angle just like that, the supplementary angle and the complementary angle. No problem. All right. But the hitting thing about vector is that it allows you to do projected distances as well. I'll go ahead and reset this tool right here. Now, let's say that I want the distance between this edge right here and this edge right here, but I want it with respect to the Z axes. I'll stay on object because these are edges. Click and click. It gives me the distance between those two items. However, it is in the wrong orientation. So if I move it over to vector, I didn't reset my menu. I'm still in the measure tool. I can go ahead and select the Z axis and you can see that it gives me the minimum projected clearance. Now there are other options here, for example, maximum projected clearance, things like that. Uh, perfect for faces, right? Uh, but that is how you uh, infer a projected distance. So my former NX users, this is what you know as a projected distance. Okay. Now the one that uh, confuses people 
a lot as well is object set. Okay, so let's read through the description there. It says selects multiple objects and adds the set to the selection list using add new set. Objects in the set will be considered together. Hmm, what exactly does that mean? All right, basically what that means is that it will combine everything that you select into one object set instead of listing it individually it will be listed uh, as one item okay so for example let's say that we want the combined length between these two edges here this edge right there and this edge right here if i wanted to do that using object i'd have to select both of them it would list them as one item and then i'd have to manually add them together I'm not really into that, so I'm going to go ahead and use object set. I'll change my selection filter to edge, and I'll go ahead and say that I want the distance between this edge here and this, I'm sorry, the combined distance between this edge here and that edge there. You can see it gives me a distance uh, that combines both of them. By the way, if you hear something very loud in the background, that's, you know, the air conditioning. You're going to have to forgive me for that. Hopefully the information you get from here <laughs> makes it worth it to listen to that air conditioner okay but as you can see we get the combined length all right very nice very easy okay so now that we have the combined length ready to rock and roll we can go ahead and reset this tool and say hmm well okay how can i use this more effectively right so okay i can get the combined length of two edges uh well where object set would be very useful as well is in assemblies. If you have to take the mass properties of something, right, of an assembly, let's say, then you need to combine all of the items in that assembly into one object set to get the summation of the mass. Okay, so I haven't shown you how to get the mass properties yet, so we'll take a look at that in a second. But that's really what object set is for. Okay, so I'll do it one more time, right? Uh, the combined length of this edge here and this edge here and let's say this edge as well you can see there's your combined length an object set it only sets it as one easy peasy okay now the other two are a little bit more special for example we're not going to go over point set here uh, but point set is pretty much the same thing as object set except it's for points you select multiple points it treats them as one item in the list here uh, instead of two separate items or x separate items right uh, i haven't really found a good use for this one yet uh, and i so you know i don't really use it too much uh, but that's what point set is for and then coordinate system is to help you define point coordinates with respect to another coordinate system uh, for example everything that we've been selecting so far for example this here uh, takes its coordinate system offsets with respect to this coordinate system down here but if you have another coordinate system let's say i put one up here as an example okay then in order to take the measurement of this guy here with respect to that coordinate system first you have to change your radio button to CSIS then you have to pick your coordinate system selection filter here. I just find that it makes it easier. Uh, but again, that's just my opinion. Let's go ahead and see if we can click this guy here. Come on. There we go. And now you can go over to the point radio button and select a point, right? So I'll say that I want that point there. You can see it gives me the distance uh, with respect to the first coordinate system. If you rewind the video, you'll see that the offsets were different. Uh, for the previous selection okay so that is what the radio buttons do in this measuring tool okay so now i've knocked out two things for you i've knocked out the selection filter and i've knocked out the uh, uh radio buttons right now the face curve and body rules are uh totally depending on what you're gonna do right uh, for example i have a wiring harness over here okay just like that uh, and let's say that you want to get the uh, overall length of say this you know this edge right here there are actually two ways you can do this for example you can leave it on object and just change your curve rule to tangent curves right that is not the same thing as object set right it'll select everything that's tangent for you Okay, and it'll still treat it as one object. Object set 
would be different. Object set would be if you have it set to single curve and then you go in there and select all the individual curves yourself. Okay. So I'll set it to tangent curves here. I'll select that. Uh, as you can see, I have a uh, one tangent curve right there. It seems like the length is 30.1892 inches, right? There's object right there. Okay. And if I keep going, I can keep selecting more wiring harnesses if I had more. Okay. Uh, so it seems like we have a little bit of a problem right here, right? So let's go ahead and reset this tool. Okay. Let's try object set. Let's say I want the length of, um, you know, this edge here, plus one of these little uh, edges that, you know, it branches into. So I'll go ahead and select this edge here. And by edge, I mean curve, I'm sorry. So there's the overall length, but I'll zoom in here and I'll go ahead and select, say this guy, you can see it gives me the combined length there. That's not the same thing as tangent curves. Okay. So now that you are pretty familiar with the measuring tool, how do you get the mass properties of something? In order to get the mass properties, you're going to go to the measure command again. You're going to change your selection filter to solid body. Okay. Make sure your radio button for single parts set it to object. And all you have to do is click the body. As you can see, it gives you all of the information here. Not a problem. Okay. Now, you might notice that there's quite a bit of information over here, and we'll talk about that in a second, all right? But if you want to get the center of mass, all you have to do is click this little button right here. Now, I want you to read it very carefully. It says, creates non-associative geometry on OK or apply. Hmm, that's worded very interestingly, right? It means that it'll just create a dummy point at the center of gravity, but if the geometry changes, it will not update the center of gravity. You will have to come back and remeasure this if you want. Okay. Now, for most folks, this is acceptable, right? They only want a preview of the, uh, you know, of the center of mass, and it's like, oh, okay, well, perfect. I'll get rid of it after that, right? But if you want it to be associative, you have to go down here into settings, and you have to turn on this button here that says associative. When you click that, you will notice that these little icons over here kind of changed color. See that? What exactly does that mean? It means that every single piece of information that is highlighted in gold here, right? That is going to go into your expressions editor. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Uh, so now that these are in gold, if you hit this little guy, if you read the description now, it says creates geometry associative to the measure feature. Ah, so now if I turn this on, which I'm going to do right now. Okay. If I turn that on, if the geometry changes, then my center of gravity will also change. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn that on. All right, but let's say that, you know, all this information is great, but you don't need all of it. If you want to turn off certain things from going into your expressions editor, simply click the little gold icons there. There's one, two, three, you know, I want the volume, I want the center of mass, the mass and the weight. Let's turn these guys off. We don't need those. And that's good enough for me. Okay, so now that I have those off, the only four things that will go into my expressions editor are going to be the volume, the center of mass, the mass, and the weight. Okay, and since I turned this guy on, I'm also going to get the center of gravity. Okay, let's take a look at this settings menu over here. So we turn on associative, that's good. Display annotation means that once you hit OK, it will give you a little note pointing towards the model that gives you the properties that you see here. Uh, this is perfect for PMI or MBD purposes. I'm going to leave that off. Create geometry that basically creates the center of gravity and these axes that you see here. Okay, I'm not going to do that. So I'll just leave that I don't want the axes. I just really want the center of gravity. Fix at current timestamp. This one's very important. Okay. If you look at the part navigator that I have over here, you will see that I have uh, the datum coordinate system number six as the last feature. If you turn on associative and fix it current timestamp and hit OK, which I'm not going to do yet, but if you hit OK, it will record the measuring here in your part navigator as feature number seven, right? And what fix at current timestamp does is it basically freezes the measurement up to feature number seven. So anything that happens before your measurement will change your measurement. 
anything that happens after the measurement does not affect your measurement data. As a new user, I suggest you leave this on. It's always safe to just come back and do another measuring tool. Okay. Uh, reference thesis, it seems to be my absolute work part. That's right there. Send results to the console. Uh, there's a console over here somewhere that I always forget where it is, right? Uh, where is it? Somewhere around here. So somewhere around here, it'll send the results there. Uh, I don't really care about that. Show results and in information window. I'll turn that on. Uh, present hints. Well, that's what you're here, right? So turn that off. Uh, and that's it. Let's go ahead and hit OK on this and see what happens. As you can see, uh, it spits out the data that we are looking for right here. Now, you can save this if, if you want as a text file. Uh, that way you can send it off to your analyst. And if you look at the part navigator now, you'll see that measure body number seven right, shows up in your part navigator. And it's fixed in that timestamp, which means it'll always be feature number seven. Okay. All right. We're knocking out a lot of stuff here, right? Quite a bit of stuff. And, of course, there's the center of gravity here that I just showed you earlier, right? So let's go back to the measuring tool here because I have a couple of pop quiz questions for you just to kind of see if you've learned anything, right? Let's say that I want to get the measurement between the center of gravity and say this back wall here. How would you do that? Well, remember, we can't pick the point here. And not only that, our selection filter is still set to solid body, right? It's like, ugh, okay. So let's go ahead and reset it just to make it go back to normal. So that turns off associative, that turns off all that other stuff, which is good because if you're not careful, you're selecting things. And if you hit OK, that's going into your expressions editor, right? I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but after resetting the menu, right, we can't pick that point. It's like, ah, oh, it looks like we can. Oh, look at that. All right, good, good, good. But if you're having a little bit of trouble, you can try the point radio button, right? So let's pick that center of gravity there. Then go to object and then pick the back wall here. You can see we get the measurement just like that. I could have done it with object, but I just want to show you that there are multiple ways to skin a cat here. Okay. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. We're knocking things out here. And if you look over at your expressions editor, you can do that by hitting control E, or I believe it's located in tools, uh, expressions, right? Anything that is in purple other than, you know, your attributes, let's say measurement, they obviously come from your measuring tool. Okay. And of course, you can double click on the parameter there and rename it. For example, I'll call this volume, just like that. And you can hit OK. Now there is a parameter called volume in your expressions table. Okay. Looking pretty good. Now let's take a look at a couple of other things that the measuring tool give you. Okay, let's go back to the measure here. So we've covered the radio buttons. We know what this list means. We know what the settings do, right? Pretty nice, except that little one option down there, the preferences. I'll show you that at the end. So then what the heck are these guys over here? The measurement methods, okay? These are neat little things that allow you to establish uh, measurements uh, without having to reset this tool multiple times. We've been using free so far, but let's try this one, the pairs of objects. Let's say that, you know, we party too hard over the weekend. We come back and it's like, ugh, I don't remember if these two legs are the same thickness, okay? Now, using a traditional measuring tool or even the object or free measurement method, we have to measure this twice, write it down, measure the other one, and be like, oh, yeah, it's the same thing, right? But with pairs of objects, we can measure both of them in one go. I'll turn off the angle measurement here since I'm not going to need it, but I'll go ahead and say I want the measurement between this face here, that face there. You can see there's your minimum distance, and I can keep going. I'll measure the distance between there and there. You can see that we can confirm absolutely that those are half of an inch, okay? And just because it has a picture of two doesn't mean that you're locked down to two. Uh, I can set a measurement from the front chin here to the back wall. See that? Absolutely flawless. All right. And one thing that I do love to do with this tool, you can hit this little plane here to make it parallel to your screen. And you can actually move these around by holding that little indented section of the window there. Uh, you can also move the little arrows by holding down the left mouse button on the handle. And, you know, you can take some screenshots if you want, right? Just like that. 
It's like, oh yeah, there you go. That's the measurement. We can confirm, yes, these are the same thickness here, right? Your coworker arguing with you that they're not the same size. Well, they're wrong. People lie, numbers don't. There it is right there. Half of an inch, half of an inch, right? Okay, so that is pairs of objects. What about the next one? Chain of objects. Well, what that will do is it will start your new measurement based on what you ended on before. For example, let's say that I want the distance between this front chin and this, let me turn off the angle there, this front wall of the leg, that's 0 0.55. The next thing I select, it's going to take its measurement with respect to this face, the one that I just ended on, right? So the front of that leg. So if I click this one here, it's going to return half of an inch, right? Boom, there we go. I can keep going from there to there, there, boom. See that? That is what chain of objects does. Okay. Finally, we have this one here from reference object. Some of you know this as an ordinate dimension. So for example, let's say that my reference object is going to be this guy right there. Okay, so everything that I select from here on forward is going to be with respect to this face, right? Uh, so I'll take a measurement from that face that I just selected to this front wall here. So that's 0 0.55, right? Turn off the angle again. Uh, and then let's say I pick this back wall here. So that's going to be what? 0 0.55 plus half of an inch, right? Because it's taking its measurement from the front chin to this wall here. The front chin is always the first object. Click. There we go, right? And then so on and so forth. Very nice. Very easy. Okay. Now, at this point, I've pretty much displayed to you most of these uh, result filters here. There's just one that I do want to show you. I'll leave this one to you, the extreme. That one's extra homework for you. See if you can figure out what that one is for. But I want to show you this one, others, okay? This one is pretty nice for things like packaging. For example, let's say that I'm going to throw this in a box, and I want to find out what the largest box is. Uh, that, or actually the smallest boxes that I could fit this in, right? So I'll change this over to solid body, click that. Uh, and I can turn on this guy that says others, okay? So maybe I don't want the body measurement. We could turn that off, but we can turn on others there. As you can see, it just gives me a bounding box uh, of, uh, you know, where I can put this in, okay? They're very nice for packaging. It's like, okay, there you go. That's how much volume this thing would take up if it were a box, right? Uh, you can, of course, store these measurements as well if you turn on associative. Again, that'll throw it in your expressions editor. Uh, but that's a pretty nice one for packaging. All right. So the last type of measurement that I want to show you is actually an assembly measurement, right? So I have one right here. Okay. Delete that coordinate system there. Really, the only thing I want to quiz you on is, you know, how would you take the mass properties of this assembly? Okay. Uh, so if you go to measure, right, what would you have to do here? Hmm. Well, the first thing would probably be changes to either component or solid body. Now, I modeled this assembly to be, you know, perfect uh, with just one body per part file. So I'll choose solid body there and I can hit control A. OK, come on, control A. OK, looks like it doesn't like that. <laughs> so let's go to make a box around this whole thing. Uh, Let's see, why is it not liking solid body? That's a little concerning. Let's try, oh, makes sense. I'm on object, right? See, ah, I'm quizzing you to see if you're awake. I have it set to solid body, but here's the thing that infuriates me once in a while. It's not a good idea to change your selection filter first. You should first pick your radio button because otherwise it'll reset your selection filter, right? So make sure you are on object set, right? Because we're measuring multiple things as one item. And then change your selection filter to solid body. Hit control A. And as you can see, we get the mass properties of this entire assembly. Okay. That is how you take the mass properties. All right. So if you were only interested in a couple of things in the assembly. All right. Let's see how that's done. So we'll go to object set, change it to solid body. Uh, and we just pick the items that we're interested in. So let's say I want to get the mass of these two heat exchangers. I'll click both of those. It's like, okay, there you go. The mass of them is about 20 pounds. Okay. Nice and easy. All right. So 
there's just one final thing with the measuring tool. At this point, you should be an expert at the measuring tool. You should feel pretty comfortable with it. Uh, but there are a couple other things you might be interested in. For example, if you go to settings, there's a little preferences button down here. Uh, you can change the units. Uh, I mainly work in inches, but I know I have a couple of folks who work a lot with metric. So you can change it from here, just like that. Okay. Uh, I know I have a couple of SOLIDWORKS folks that like the X, Y, Z delta values. If you go over into measurements and then distance, you can see there's X, Y, Z delta distances. You can turn that on if you want. I personally don't like it, but it is there for you. Okay. Uh, and there are other things in here you can mess around with, but those are probably the two most important ones for you. Okay. So this video was quite long, but I hope it will help you out in your measurement journey. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to drop them down below. As always, I appreciate you watching and take care. Bye bye.